The good guys won. I'm Larry Levy. And I'm Bob McMillan. All we won in Kosovo was a mess that we made worse tonight as we face off. We won. A million refugees still don't have homes. Bob, the refugees are streaming back, and they're thankful to NATO for coming to their rescue. And Milosevic, Milosevic's going to be squeezed out by hawks and doves alike in his country. And what's wrong with U.S. troops, along with those from other countries, helping to end ethnic cleansing and giving peace a chance? Look, I think you've got to take the bigger picture. We've got okay. Serbs in retreat. Refugees are returning. At least for NATO troops, no deaths on the ground. Russians big problem. I don't want to minimize that, and I know we're going to be getting into it in, in the show with our guests, but we are working with them. We're talking with them. Our generals are, are straightening things out with their generals. If you'd have said 10 years ago or 20 years ago that the United States was working with, with the Soviets in terms of bringing peace to the Balkans, you'd have looked yeah, at me and said, what was I smoking? Working as they're blocking us at the airport. Larry, Details. the other thing is, you know, you really have to take a look here and say, what did we win? In other words, what was the strategic interest of the United States in going in beyond the ethnic cleansing issue? And with that, Larry... Beyond the ethnic cleansing okay, issue? Okay, Larry, wow. we'll get into that. Ooh. We'll get into that. Let's first of all introduce our guests. First of all, former Congressman Joseph Diaguardi, president of the Albanian American Civic League, and Carolyn Eisenberg, who is a professor of diplomatic history at Hofstra University. Joe, let me turn to you for the first question. A serious issue. And I know Larry always says, and everybody wants to hawk on the idea of ethnic cleansing. That was, dis dis that was awful. It was wrong. Terrible. It was terrible. But Joe, beyond that, what was the, because ethnic cleansing is going on in other parts around the world, why did we have to move into Kosovo when we haven't touched ethnic cleansing going on in Africa and northern Turkey and northern Iraq with the Kurds? Well, first of all, this didn't start in the last year or two. This has been going on for at least 10 years. Don't forget, Belosevich walked into Kosovo in 1989 when 700,000 Albanians threw their communist party cards into the bonfire right after the Berlin Wall came down, and he wanted to send a signal that he was going to control everything. And then he went to Slovenia, and then he went to Croatia, and then we had Bosnia. And only after we lost 250,000 innocent civilians did we arm the Croatians and, did we, and the bombing Joe, started to work. What but, is the strategic interest of the is, United uh, States? When That's President what I want to ask. put that map of Kosovo what? on the wall and said, here it is, 160 miles from Italy, and here's Albania, 60 miles from Italy. That's how my father's people got there 500 years but, ago. I, 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 and that, I, then we understand I, that this is part of Europe. Go ahead. You know, I, I mean... It seems to me that in, in presenting the matter the way that you have, that what you're leaving out is is the dimension of humanitarian concern. I, and I think that... I think we all know, have that concern. Well, but I, I think it's not unreasonable to say that in situations of the sort that we've had in the former Yugoslavia, that it's something that the international community should be concerned about, that the United States should be concerned about, and that action in, in these places is appropriate. I think the, the, the fundamental question uh, for us is not should we be concerned about ethnic cleansing should we take action but what is the kind of action that we take and you know with which partners and from my point of view what's distressing is this new kind of warfare where we target civilian infrastructure as a way of prevailing over people with whom we disagree and which we really ignore the United Nations in which we use our own alliance in a unilateral fashion, do what we but, want and set a precedent. You forgot, you know, Turkey and Greece and Macedonia. There was uh, an excellent chance here that this thing would spill over from Kosovo into Macedonia, a very fragile state, and we already have two NATO allies at each other's throats in Cyprus. This would have easily pitted them together because they both have interests in Macedonia, and we could not have allowed that to happen. There are a million ethnic Albanians in western Macedonia, and they would have jumped into this if, if, if NATO didn't continue the bombing and, and push back Milosevic. Ethnic cleansing is wrong. It's horrible. 
But why is ethnic cleansing well, me, wrong in Albania, wait, wait, wait. but it's not wrong in, in Rwanda, where probably more well, people have been slaughtered? Because we had to set priorities. You can't do well, everything can't at do the same time. Yeah, but do don't, then don't give and, them and just Europe one thing. Is a priority. There has to be a national you're not, you're not of listening. The He's States. talking about stability in Central Europe. And you don't want to hear that part. I do want to hear that part. Well, that's, you think part, we have that's what he said. But I think what Carolyn is saying is that are we going to have stability as a result of the way we executed well, let, let this me, let me just back up. Let me just, I, I, It seems to me that there's no clear answer to that let, at all. Let me just back point. up for a second. Let me just back up for a second. Um, you take issue with how we went about expressing our concerns and yes. bombing civilian infrastructure. infrastructure. Is there any other way in reality, knowing Milosevic, knowing his history, that he would have ceased and desist at what he was doing without being bombed? Well, you know, yeah. as a small point, this, this question of how well we know Milosevic in some ways has been almost a sort of tragic comic aspect of this whole situation. Um, because for, for months, people who all claim to know Milosevic have been making wrong predictions one way or the other. There were the people like Holbrook and others who thought, well, we'll threaten to bomb them and drop a few bombs, and then they'll definitely right. give up. Madeline and, Albright, yeah. Right, and then it turned out to be a big mistake. Then the people who said once the bombing started, we know this guy so well, uh, we know he's never going to give up. That turns out to not be right either. So I'm not sure that any of us really know him very well. Okay. But, but if we this thing a lot sooner, have we committed the ground troops? And short of that, we should have armed the Kosovo Liberation Army the way we armed the Croatians covertly. That's what brought Milosevic well, we to we the table at date. I think some evidence is coming out that we have armed. We've the, cooperated. We've armed the There's no the question day. that we cooperated let me, with Joe, them. let me tell you, arming the... Uh, the Kosovar is fine. Let them take back their homeland. Self-defense. But what about the... But let me ask you this now. The tables are now reversed. Serbs are fleeing uh, Kosovo as we talk. Serbs are fleeing along with the, the Serbian tanks and the military. And that's not Is happening that right? because of Albania. Well, let me ask you this. What should be done about that? Well, Isn't that a concern? Absolutely. Hundreds of thousands of people. Albanians have lived side by side Serbs for hundreds of years. It's this Nazi communist regime of Slobodan Milosevic that pitted them against each other. Now, there are Serbs with dirty hands. There's no question that Serb civilians not all joined with the power. Not all 200,000. Absolutely. Serbs. And we don't want to see them leave. No. And, and their holy sites have always been protected by Albanians. Those holy sites were Albanian Catholic monasteries and churches 500 years ago that the Serbs took over. Not one of them. Not one of them has been hurt by any Albanians during this crisis. Now, you know... For, for the Serbs, especially Milosevic, to be always talking about the holy sites in the north when very few Serbs visit there, when the real issue is the Trepska yeah. mines in the north. Don't forget, some of the richest gold mines, coal, chromium, zinc, copper, are in Trepska. Hitler used but, those you know, mines. Like for 10 years, we allowed this war criminal to get away with the worst human rights abuses we've seen okay. since not yes, Germany. But, but, and this, but, is but, not, but, this is not the, uh, you know, the Albanian-American Civic League. If you looked at our U.S. country reports, the State Department repairs them every year. From 1985, you'll see the most egregious human rights Joe, violations you have been since consistent. World War II. Oh, Joe, you have been consistent as a member of Congress. I, I have this read, issue to Congress in 86. I, I have read some of the same reports, and some of those reports express great concern about the KLA Call the and what will happen, and Total what are you going to do, just revert Total propaganda. propaganda. Do you know that the Washington Times printed an article three weeks ago and said they were listed as a terrorist organization by the State Department? Hogwash. A year ago, when Gelbard mistakenly Joe, referred to I them as terrorists, I think you may be protesting a little well, too much because let, let's face it, Joe, they're on no what, list. There what, are, there's no what list is the, which holds them as a terrorist. Isn't there part of the this, nature of the transfer of the heroin trade in northern Italy is traced directly to Albania? This is the Albanian mafia, the Greek mafia, and the Italian mafia, and some are trying to attribute that activity to the Kosovo Liberation Army. Again, this I, is Milosevic's well, propaganda. Well, what should all, we have done differently? Well, first of all, it, it seems to me that when people are going to bomb. Um, and particularly when they're going to bomb civilian areas, the burden uh, is on the people choosing it um, to, to make the case for why this is an appropriate But they didn't target civilian areas deliberately. Well, the Serbs were no, hiding their actually, tanks actually, and, their, and their service to air missiles right in the woods next to civilian installations but, but, uh, and the, buildings. But the question, there still remains a moral question here about whether, you know, as a, as a way of, 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 of waging war, 
Um, it is now acceptable for, for nations, again, acting without United Nations authorization, well, without sanction, well, that, that without a declaration of war, without any opportunity for the American people or our elected representatives to have any say. I mean, we, we essentially initiated war against our Well, no, what know, troubles me I, is that we could have sent the signal to the most cunning strategist we've seen since uh, World War II, uh, this guy Milosevic, where we told him we would not commit ground troops. That's exactly what he wanted to hear. Well, that's and one that's thing I'm very critical in. of Clinton on. Was that a mistake, Carolyn, by yes, not, I, it, by not it, threatening ground me, troops? Sign, yeah, I, I think we probably agree about that. But, you know, particularly in a situation where we're going to stop start bombing on the one hand, yes. but we also announce in advance that we're not going to send ground troops. We should troops. have built up the ground Seems troops like, and then decide later whether we're going to use them but, or not. Now, this, I'm a Republican, well, and I am praising President Clinton for showing the language of resolve for 10 years. The Bush administration, we had more kinds of errors between Eagle Burger and Baker saying that we have to keep Yugoslavia together at all costs. We gave Milosevic the green light to go into Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, killed hundreds of thousands of civilians. This was the time that Clinton learned and but said, we cannot deal with this man the at the table. We must use the only language he understands, which was force, well, and it worked. I mean, partly what makes this a troubling situation is that the people that are paying the price of our policy are not necessarily the individuals who are guilty. But they have to get rid of so him. That when, they have to get rid of him. But there are some ways that you get rid of a person and, or, or a government or a regime and others that you don't. I mean, nobody in the world has, has accepted the notion that any means is, is, is acceptable. But, but let me say this. He's okay. now an indicted war criminal. You remember Adolf Eichmann? But does that make, Let's learn from our Jewish brothers and sisters. Well, well, it took 15 years, but they went in and they took him and they brought so, him to justice. So is blowing so up a hospital. Joe, 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 one at a time, one at a time. So is blowing up a hospital hospital um, you know is, is that like an, an appropriate no, response that we, are you that saying that, that they that blew up the hospital no, on purpose? purpose no what I'm saying is that they clearly crossed a kind of Rubicon in their thinking that that and, and I think part of it also has to do with the way they miscalculated the situation that all the evidence we have suggests they thought they would drop a few bombs Milosevic would give up and they would get True. their way and they were then stuck with this enormous embarrassment, at least they continue. enormous embarrassment for NATO of a thing that they had overlooked, which was the possibility that this Hitler character would in fact do um, what he had been saying he would do and throw all the Albanians out. So then they were stuck. But it seems to me it's very obvious that they crossed the divide and that at a certain point what they decided is that so critical was it that NATO's credibility and Bill Clinton's credibility be salvaged that they expanded their target list in quite a different way. But can you imagine and losing this target, battle? Well, you cannot lose this. Once it got started, well, I, we I had just, to win it. We, we have to win it for who? We have to win it for NATO? For NATO, we have to number one. What, what about a million ethnic but, Albanians? But, right, but, for, but, to but show that, that we all, stand but, for but something when it comes to uh, this kind of notion, barbarism. So, but, but, but what about the barbarism of, of, of planes that fly so high that nobody has, you know, can see what they're doing? And in which, in order to save, you know, one American life, you're willing to expend large numbers of other people's lives, many of them civilians, in order to get our way. You're right. Now, this is a and, very, and we very troubling. Should have troubling, sent ground troops, or at least position America. This is a very troubling because, sort of precedent. And yeah, I think, you know, partly what we're not, you know, also dealing with, which is quite apart from the regional situation, is what is the long-range fallout of the kind of policy that we've just pursued. We have emasculated our military capability over a period of 10 years. There's no question. 280 billion well, dollars a yeah, year? Yeah, 280 billion, but let me tell you, uh, a lot has been uh, not achieved because we have not been able to even accomplish the objectives of waging two regional wars, if that's what the military is saying that we must do. What we've been doing is little by little, we have not been replacing the, the weapons that we need. We haven't been increasing the technology. And if we don't remain the only superpower at a time when you have North Korea flexing its nuclear muscle and you have uh, Pakistan, oh, but you're uh, we, we got a problem. Between, between conventional weapons and nuclear right, weapons. But the point is we need to not only be, we need to appear to be the strongest uh, player around. Why and, is and that? We have to build, I, you, it, no, we have to because it's deterrence. It's deterrence. But, People but, don't but, act. But if we had put those troops on the border, when, you have when Milosevic was doing this, time, he would not have acted. Right. But we want the, the Europeans to take more responsibility for the sec uh, security of Europe, and they did that. Sure, we used the bombs a lot, but look at the soldiers. As We're going to have 7,000 U.S. soldiers out of 50,000. 
I think that's a, uh, a good step okay. forward let me for your pursuing that, responsibility. That let me come in, I want to come in with one left. question to really like both of you. You have less answer. than a minute left. Uh, are the Kosovo's who have been relocated to the United States, I think the figure is 20,000, 20,000 to other parts of Europe. They want to go they back. Gonna go, are they going to go back? They want, I was just in Fort Dix yesterday, and I can assure you, most of the people want to go back. A friend of mine called me from uh, Alaska, Anchorage. He was there to pick up 11 of his relatives, and they weren't on a plane. While he was gone, they called to say, we're going back to Kosovo. Sure. We're not coming uh, to Anchorage. So you're going to see them go back. Okay. That's Carolyn, what they want. But you know the key is? They need their independence to create long-term stability in this area under international law. They're 92 percent. They deserve okay, to on, be we, we're independent. Out of time. So, independence for the Kosovars is that going to fly, or is that just going to make things uh, worse? Um, I suspect it's not going to happen right. anytime soon. I think it will. Guys, we are out of time. I'd like to thank our guests. First, Carolyn Eisenberg, professor of diplomatic history at Hofstra University and former Congressman Joseph Diaguardia, president of the Albanian American Civic League. Thanks a lot for being here. Congressman Diaguardia, we, we have to go further and yeah. deeper into this whole area. First of all, Milosevic wins in this deal. He stays in power. Absolutely he keeps not. his. Wait a minute. Why do you think Have he's going to stay in power? Why do you, you think he's going to stay in power? Have you read this deal? He Listen. stays in power. He has his military. There's no penalty for his, his war crimes at all. The KLA, the people that agreed to autonomy, not independence, what they wanted, these are the people that really get screwed. These are the people that uh, well, uh, get disarmed you, in the what process. What makes you think this deal is going That's forward? That's what the deal Did is. Did you hear President Clinton are what he you said? Kidding? He said that we'll do nothing until all the Serb uh, troops are, are out. And he's going to look at his actions, Congress, not his words. I can't believe at you're sitting here saying this. This is a disaster. I, Let listen. me tell you, this deal is done. But I don't understand. You don't see this, Congressman. You're shocking me here tonight. You don't see. This is a done deal. I guarantee you, this, the president has made the deal. I, you are naive. I, I would say the you, same to you. You think, you think the Albanians will go back? The yes. whole deal is to get yes. the Albanians back. Yes. They will not go back if there's one Serb soldier matter. left but there. It doesn't matter. He's going to be in power. He's going to have his military. Listen, and Clinton wanted a deal say because something? this is all politics Can I say, after what the Albanians have been through since Tito died, don't yeah. forget, this didn't start two years ago. It started in 1980. And then it was escalated in 1989 with the, uh, with the occupation. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the Albanians will stand by I while Milosevic am, comes back to the table? I am telling you that Clinton has sold you, you out. Let Clinton me, has no. never been in this for Let principle. You. you say Slobo cried uncle, and I say, I say Slobo won. And I'll tell you why I think he won. First of all, you notice there was no mention of his war crime prosecutions in the 12-point peace plan, none at all. And, and he and gets, to, wrong. gets to keep his military. It's wrong. Gets to keep his military. Do you think that he this got is all the, a closed deal? He got the ethnic Albanians. Let me finish. It's not a done deal. He got the ethnic Albanians out. He got the bombing to stop. And, and he got back. his opposition disarmed. How could you de not declare that anything but a full Are victory for Slobo? Do you see what he did full to victory. Yugoslavia? Look at the infrastructure. He, he, no bridges, no trains, no electricity. The people the food is wanted disappearing. Out. The, food he, the people they wanted out are jump gone. on him like the Ceausescu's would jump well, on. What is the punishment for him? U podršci albanskom separatizmu i terorizmu na Kosovu i Metohiji posebno se angažala albanska emigracija u zemljama zapadne Evrope i SAD. U Americi je 86. godine još osnovano albansko-američka civilna liga pod predsjedništvom uticajno kongresmena Josefa Diogardija, čiji je zadatak bio da aktivno lobira na Capitol Hillu za zahteve i ciljeve kosovskih albanaca. Aktivnim lobiranjem Liga je otvorila put kosovsko-metohijskim separatistima za zvanične kontakte u Američkom senatu i kongresu. U svakom slučaju, Albansko-Američka civilna Liga je u mnogome doprinela sistematskom širenju antisrpskog raspoloženja i satanizaciji srpskog naroda u američkoj javnosti. Hello, I'm former Congressman Joe Diaguardi, the president of the Albanian American Civic League. You've just heard former Serbian dictator and indicted war criminal Slobodan Milosevic misrepresent our important work in Washington to free Kosovo and all Albanians from the tyranny of his regime. The Civic League has been working for 15 years as an independent lobby in Washington and around the world for all Albanians in the Balkans, but our job is not yet finished. Even though Slobodan Milosevic is in The Hague, his racist, ultra-nationalist party 
won in Serbia's recent elections. Even though Kosovar Albanians endured occupation and genocide at Belgrade's hands, many members of the European Union and the U.S. State Department are seeking to either petition Kosovo along ethnic lines or put it back under Serbia. Bowing to international pressure, most of Kosovo's political leaders unfortunately have been passive in the face of these challenges. At the urging of the Albanian American Civic League, the leaders of foreign policy in the U.S. House of Representatives, Congressman Henry Hyde and Tom Lantos, have taken an important step to ensure that Kosovo and the Balkans become free, safe, democratic, and prosperous. They have introduced House Resolution 28 calling on the United States to declare its support for the independence of Kosovo now. Please visit the Civic League's website at aacl.com and add your name to the petition calling on President Bush to support the passage of House Resolution 28. You can make a difference today by joining the international campaign for the independence of Kosovo now. The future of Kosovo is in your hands.